Hello, hello, and welcome to this quick tutorial on the Cessna Grand Caravan. Also known as the Cessna 208 Caravan, this is a single-engine, turboprop aircraft that generally seats 9 passengers, but that can be extended to 14. The aircraft featured in FSX is the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan variant, which is a slightly longer version of the basic plane and it also holds a more powerful engine. The Caravan is a very versatile aircraft as it can be used for passenger transport, cargo transport, air freight, air ambulance operations and parachuting operations. It is also used by many military forces around the world. So let's jump in and take a look at this awesome aircraft. So the first thing you'll notice is the lack of runway. Um, unfortunately the 2D panel doesn't offer great visibility so you may end up switching to the virtual cockpit for takeoff and landing. That said, all of the instruments here are perfectly suitable for flying under IFR conditions, so let's take a closer look at them all. So first we have our six pack of instruments in the centre, however these are slightly different compared to the planes that I've looked at before. Now while these instruments look different, they all work the same as instruments you will have seen before. The main difference is that you have a dual ADF instrument instead of a turn coordinator in the bottom left there. Now if we continue to move down you can see that we do have a turn coordinator here. Next up you have three switches which are all related to de-icing systems in the plane. Below that you have a little lever to enable the parking brake. And then the last instrument at the bottom here is a secondary VOR indicator. So let's jump back to the left hand side and work our way up and over the panel. So starting in the bottom left corner you have a few switches. Now you actually can't click on these but you'll see in a couple of minutes how to access these switches. Just above those you have a little knob which is used to turn on and control the brightness of the interior lights in the cockpit. Beside that you have a group of switches which control all the other lights in the plane such as the nav and landing lights. Next up you have a dial and a four-way switch. This is an indicator for the various electrical systems on the plane so you can check and make sure that the various systems are producing the correct amount of power. Just above that you have your marker lights for ILS landings. Next up you have three switches here. These are your flight director, autopilot master and your nav or GPS switch. To the right of those you have your vacuum or suction gauge. So several instruments work using a vacuum pump which is driven by the engine. So if this fails for any reason some of the instruments might not work correctly. You can use this vacuum gauge to monitor that system. And then finally, for the left-hand side of the panel, you simply have an analog clock. Now, let's have a look along the top of the panel. Firstly, you have two buttons and a large row of indicator lights. This is your annunciator panel, which will light up to show if any problems are detected within the plane. The two buttons on the left allow you to test the lights to make sure they all work correctly. Now, just above those, you have another row of buttons which will open up more 2D panels. I'm going to look at these in a moment uh, after I finish talking about the main panel. And then finally, on the top right of the panel, you have a couple of gauges related to the engine. However, you'll see more of these shortly. Moving down the right hand side of the panel now, the first instrument you'll see is simply an autopilot panel. Now you can't control any of the autopilot settings from here. It will simply show you whether an autopilot feature has been enabled or not. For example, if altitude hold has been selected, it will light up. Below that you have a DME panel for DME readings. Next up is your radar altimeter. So while your regular altimeter measures your altitude to sea level, the radar altimeter measures your altitude compared to the ground directly beneath the plane. And then finally in the bottom right you have a locking handle which is used to control the inertial separator. So the inertial separator is basically a valve which is part of the engine and it is opened to prevent debris from entering the engine. The problem with keeping this valve open all of the time is that the engine loses power so the pilot has the option to open or close it. And that pretty much covers everything for the main panel so let's jump back up to the top and look at the various pop-ups which are available. Okay, so here we are live in the plane now. Um, so I'm just going to talk about this row of buttons up here. So some of these you would have seen before in the Cessna. So you've got a button for your checklists here. You've got air traffic control. Uh, this icon is actually the map, but I'm not going to open that because it kind of pauses the game and opens up the, the kind of the external map. Or, or, you know, it's the same as going to the menu and selecting map there. So I'm not going to do that. 
Uh, the little antenna for opening up the radio stack, which you can see is the same as in the uh, Cessna 172 there. So you've got all your autopilot down here and you can do all of your nav and normal stuff in there. Uh, next up you have the GPS, so you can uh, do what you need to do with the GPS there. Now the first sort of 2D panel that will be new to you will be this one here, which opens up a throttle quadrant. And all of the controls on the throttle quadrant here are are sort of, uh, you know, you can move them, you can activate them and stuff. So uh, starting from left to right, we've got our trim tab, or pitch trim there. And you can see the little pitch uh, trim indicator there. Now you have an emergency sort of a throttle lever, I think it is. Um, I'm not sure if you can move that. You certainly can't click on it and move it. But uh, there may be a, a sort of a key binding that you can. And then, as you saw in the uh, the Mooney Bravo, you've got black lever for throttle, blue lever for propeller pitch, and then red lever for fuel mixture. Also on the throttle quadrant, you have your flaps here as well. And then going down to the sort of the bottom of the pedestal here, you have your aileron trim, uh, rudder trim, and then your fuel shutoff valve there. Uh, if you click on the little fuel icon here, this simply gives you your fuel selector switch. So you have left tank, both, right tank, and then two options for off. This little kind of electricity symbol here. This uh, is your sort of panel for the switches down here that you can click on before. So you can see that these give you all your various electrical options, such as the battery, generator, fuel boost, uh, ignition, starter switch, and also your avionics master switch. This little icon here gives you a row of um, engine related gauges. So you have uh, temperature, RPM, fuel flow, and your fuel uh, capacity here. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't contain the full row of instruments. So uh, this is kind of what's off screen to the right. So you'll still need to keep an eye on these two engine instruments here for engine performance. And the last two uh, panels are very simple. You've got a magnetic compass there and then a little uh, outside air temperature there. So those are the um, the other 2D panels which are available in the uh, Cessna Caravan. So that pretty much covers everything for the Cessna Caravan. Um, it's really a plane that you have to just jump into and fly to, to sort of experience it. Um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't put much time into it myself, but I think that once you get the hang of it, it can be a really sort of rewarding plane to fly. and. Um, certainly much more involved than flying a 172 so um, I definitely recommend it and given how versatile an aircraft it is it's uh, definitely one that's worth um, you know trying to learn and put some time into okay so just before I wrap up I just wanted to give you a, a quick kind of overview of the 3d uh, or the virtual cockpit view in the Cessna caravan um, so you can see that all of the instruments are pretty much in the same location as they are in the 2d cockpit um, some of the key differences is that you're missing all of your de-ice options, sort of in the bottom centre here. I believe that they're all kind of tucked in down here underneath the yoke, but um, uh, yeah, you can't really see them at the moment. Um, and if, if you have a look here as well, you can see that the radio stack's kind of split in two. Um, as for the cockpit itself, you can see that the uh, six-pack instruments are copied over here, and then you have a full row of... Um, of your engine, sorry, engine instruments there. So you can see that most of the um, instrumentation is kind of uh, on the uh, the left hand side or the kind of the captain side of the uh, the cockpit there. So um, that's a view of the uh, the 3D version of it. Um, so that pretty much uh, yeah wraps up everything for the Cessna Grand Caravan. In the next video, I'm going to have a look at the Beechcraft Baron. So hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.